And welcome back to our countdown to Super Tuesday. More of our interview with Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders, uh, your co-chair, uh, Congressman Ro Khanna, uh, told the Wall Street Journal that he's been trying to convince you to portray yourself differently as a successor of Franklin Roosevelt and as a, a new dealer. Do you ever regret labeling yourself a democratic socialist? No, I am what I am. And what democratic socialism is about to me is understanding that we have in many ways, Anderson, a socialist society today. But it is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminded us we have socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor and for other people. When Donald Trump was a private businessman, he received $800 million in tax breaks and subsidies to build luxury housing. That's called socialism for the rich. When Amazon, one of the largest, the most profitable corporations in America, doesn't pay a nickel in federal income taxes last year, that's called socialism for the rich. When we give tens of billions of dollars in subsidies and tax breaks to the fossil fuel industry, whose product is destroying our planet, that's called socialism for the rich. What I want to do is bring government programs to help working families. We are the only major country on Earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. And yet we're spending twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of other countries. We're the only major country not to have paid family and medical leave. We're giving tax breaks to billionaires when a half a million people are sleeping out on the streets tonight, when we have a dysfunctional child care system, we're underfunding education for low-income and working-class families, and hundreds of thousands of bright young people can't afford to go to college, and others are leaving school deeply in debt. So to me, what I'm talking about is getting our priorities right. No more tax breaks for billionaires, no more subsidies for the fossil fuel industry. Let's pay attention to the working families of this country. Health care is a human right. We need universal, affordable child care for all. We need to make sure that the United States is leading the world in the fight for, against climate change so that we leave this planet in a healthy and habitable way for kids and future generations. Bottom line, that's all that this is about. Government policy that works for the middle class, works for working class, works for low-income people, and not for just wealthy campaign contributors. You're, and by the way, yeah. while we're in it, yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. All right, while, while, while we're at it, I mean, let's look at what goes on in this campaign. Joe Biden has the support, the financial support of 60 billionaires. Do you really think that's going to be a campaign that brings about change? We have the support, the financial support from almost 2 million working people in this country who have contributed to our campaign more contribution than any campaign in the history of American politics, averaging $18.50 apiece. So I think we got to beat Trump. I think our campaign is best suited to do that because of our grassroots movement, because of our agenda, because of my record. And then once in office, we got to stand up for working families, stand up for the middle class, and tell the billionaire class they cannot continue to have it all. We cannot continue having three people on top owning more wealth in the bottom half of this country. Vice President Biden says people aren't looking for a revolution. He says they're looking for results and getting things done. Well, if you think it's a revolution, if Biden thinks it's a revolution to do what every other major country on earth does and guarantee health care to all people. Uh, you wrote a book called If he thinks revolution. it's a revolution so to he's, tell... He's using the word because I think you used it for your book. Yeah, I understand what he's talking about. What I'm saying, though, is if he thinks it's revolutionary to tell the pharmaceutical industry they can't charge us 10 times more for the same exact drugs they sell in Canada or Europe, if he thinks it's revolutionary that we stand up to the fossil fuel industry to try to change our climate policy and protect this planet, I don't think that's revolutionary. I think that's exactly what the American people want, and that is exactly what we have to do. You know, uh, Nelson Mandela made a very profound statement once. He said, Everything seems impossible until it is done, all right? And I think that if we don't allow Trump to divide us up by our race or where we came from or our sexual orientation, if we stand together around an agenda that works for all of us, we can bring sweeping changes to this country and give people faith in that the government of the United States works for them and not just for wealthy campaign contributors. If, if you become the Democratic nominee, will you insist that your version of Medicare for All is included in the official Democratic Party platform voted on the convention? 
Absolutely, of course. Look, this system is so dysfunctional that it really is pathetic. How do you end up spending twice as much per person on health care and have 87 million people uninsured or underinsured, 30,000 people dying each year because they don't get to a doctor when they should, half a million people going bankrupt because of medically related debt. This is an absurd system. It enriches the drug companies. They're doing great. The insurance companies are doing great. The healthcare industry made $100 billion in profit last year. So I don't think it's a revolutionary idea to say that we do what every other major country on earth does, that the function of healthcare is to provide quality care to all as a human right, not make the drug companies and the insurance companies extremely rich. Just finally, you mentioned uh, President Trump, the coronavirus, uh, and, and his tweets. He tweeted today that Democrats are fear-mongering when it comes to the coronavirus. How do you respond to that? Well, look, that Trump would appoint uh, Mike Pence as the head of the task force on the coronavirus uh, just speaks to how far out of touch Trump is with reality or his disrespect for science. We need scientists running our response to the coronavirus, and not a politician like Pence who barely believes uh, in science at all. Uh, so I would hope very much uh, that Trump uh, understands that the coronavirus is a major, major threat, not only to our country, uh, but to the entire world. We've got to work with the international community. We've got to work with the health, World Health Organization. We have to adequately fund our hospitals, our doctors, the NIH, the CDC. This is despite what Trump may think. You know, Trump is also the genius who told us that climate change is a hoax. So what we need to do is have Congress demand that we adequately fund our response, that we work with the global community, and that we have scientists running the program, not politicians who don't believe in science. Just before I let you go, uh, tomorrow, uh, California, Texas, the two biggest prizes, do you think you'll win there? I never like to speculate. All I can tell you is that we have uh, had a great incredible uh, group of thousands and thousands and thousands of volunteers in Texas, in California, and all over this country. As we speak, they're knocking on doors, they're making the phone calls, they're doing all of the things that you have to do to win. So uh, we have worked really, really hard, uh, and I hope we do well.